All right, guys. Uh, this looks a whole lot different than it did before, but it's not a whole lot, actually. It's just the, uh, the addition of the... I just basically fogged on a, a coat of the vinyl die just to put a uh, very, very thin coat to kind of unify the shells and stuff, uh, expose any issues with the bodywork, uh, and just kind of get an idea of how the blaster looks as a uh, single unit as opposed to having the different colors here and there. So... I'm really happy. I had to modify a little bit on here just because there's a bit of a difference between the bottom of the Centurion and the bottom of the Strife grip as far as uh, width and shape. So I did have to shave down a little bit on the bottom of the Centurion, but everything seems to look nice. Also, just because of the difference in the relationship of the grip, the Strife grip kind of curves down, you know, kind of curves down this way, whereas the Centurion grip just is kind of more of a, a straight much more of a boxy grip. In order to get the curvature to match from the back of the grip all the way down here, I had to add just a little bit of material there that you probably won't be able to see, but there is a bit of a discolored line right here where the Centurion grip went this way and the Strife grip goes this way, and so I needed to just add just this little bit around here to make that contour consistent so it looks like a single, single piece. I still have a little bit of work to do in here, but I wanted to see kind of how it looked um, without having the DevCon and the putty and stuff, all the different colors all together. So I do have to refine this shape a little bit, and I want to continue this line here. I might carve a little line around here to kind of tie it together as well. A uh, little bit of body work to do right here in this little spot. Um, the biggest change is probably the muzzle area, which I filled in. There we go. Using a piece of PVC, because I wanted to make sure there's room enough to be able to use atta uh, barrel attachments uh, without leaving all the kind of openness back in here that looked just like the front of the strife hanging out. Um, so I wanted something that uh, tied, you know, basically created a, a solid line, be able to fill up all this gap here. So I found a, uh, I took the, I think it was proximity barrel, and fit it on there and figured that was probably the biggest round, because um, it won't be able to work with attachments that have the locking piece on the bottom, but it needed to at least be big enough to use this uh, this muzzle from the ammo counter. So I went ahead with the largest round attachment I had and fitted it to, uh, just kind of fitted it, I have some PVC scraps laying around, and it, I found um, a piece of PVC that was just slightly bigger, so I s put the barrel on, centered up the PVC around it, tacked it in a few spots, and then took the muzzle piece out and then just cut straight through the bottom and then through the top so I could split it in half and then shape everything around. And I believe the top piece that I got the, the radius of here was a piece of full barrel material that I did the same thing to that basically gave this thing enough room to have a nice uh, spacing around it, but yet uh, gave it a nice even contour. And then I just connected the wide point uh, of the PVC part and the wide point of the full barrel and just uh, drew a straight edge across it and uh, just filled in those lines and shaved it, shaved it down, filled it with DevCon, and so that has a nice clean, uh, clean front uh, appearance. So I'm pretty happy with that. That was the biggest hang-up. That was one of those I was actually concerned with how I was going to handle that, to give it a nice completed look, but yet still allow enough room for barrel attachments. So <clears throat> that was probably the biggest thing. Uh, also, in the episode where I cut the... Uh, battery cover off. This was the blaster that that was done to. So that is done. I still need to uh, figure out a retention. I'll probably just do the same thing as the Centaur just to keep it simple. Um, I thought about doing magnets, but I wanted it to be as secure as possible. So that's probably what we're going to do there. The uh, I need to build handle scales here to cover up because I ground off all the strife grip stuff so that I could tie these two together. So I do need to cut a new piece that'll fit over here and cover up these little scratches and stuff from where I shaved off the existing grip detail. So I'll probably make a template and uh, then use some kind of textured or something um, styrene. I'm not sure what uh, what I'm gonna do with that quite yet. So yeah, just a, a few little uh, little things here and there. Um, I trimmed off this the shield detail that where the centaur, I kept the shield silhouette. I wanted to make this a little more independent. So I did shave off the shield and just left the square panels. I'm not sure if I'm going to do anything there or just leave it as is. So 
But that's kind of where, where things are at with the center eyed and really close to body work, or really close to paint on this one, I think. Just those few little things I, that I pointed out and uh, figure out uh, battery door retention. And then we can, uh, I already started working on the MOSFET loom for this. So we'll uh, pick this up uh, once, uh, once we're a little further along. Okay, actually got quite a bit done on this recently. Uh, coming down to the wire, there's about two weeks left till end war on this when this needs to be ready for paint. Um, some of the more notable additions are, uh, I did get the voltmeter added. There we go. Nice, uh, nice fit in there. And it is accessible um, from the back. Let's open this up. There, I added a couple screw ports, <clears throat> or screw bosses from uh, some blaster scraps mounted in there. I just cut the stem down a little ways, screwed it onto the um, board itself, added a little bit of DevCon to tack it in place, set it in, in you know, located it, kind of held it in place for a little bit. Once that cured, I was able to back out the screws, take the voltmeter out, reinforce where the screw bosses are mounted, and then dress it up a little bit, and now I have solid mounts for the voltmeter. Also, for the switch for the voltmeter, mounted here, so you just have to reach back and just... And that's mounted in the same fashion, using a uh, cover plate to hold the switch in place. The switch just kind of floats in there. It's located by the, the hole that it fits into, but then is uh, held down. There again, using two little short pieces of screw bosses. I believe that was from some stampede scraps. To where if you want to take it out, take out the switch for servicing or for painting, you just take out those two screws, take off the cover plate, and pop the switch out, and you're good to go. So that's all done. And I added these handle scales. Uh, mostly, my uh, purpose for that was I sanded off all the regular texture that you see on stripes. You know, usually you have this kind of a square pattern all over in here. I sanded all that off when I integrated the grip just so that I was able to have both pieces, both blaster pieces kind of on the same level. Um, otherwise I would have had to cut a piece. I was just, it just in order to make sure everything was smooth, I grindered it all the way off flat to make sure that the integration itself was seamless and then to add that texture back on then I just cut a piece of this textured styrene uh, evergreen sheet styrene this is uh, found in the model railroad section of hobby st hobby stores generally speaking this uh, was I believe this this one has kind of like a siding um, profile I believe this was made for scratch building box cars and stuff like that uh, but it does leave a nice texture here. This piece came out really nice and I wanted to kind of add a little bit more so I just made another pattern and added this little bit up on the front grip and that'll kind of help not only cover up the worker logos that I filled in but also to kind of make the blaster itself a little more uh, there again cohesive. Obviously there's not like oh wow this thing is so much more grippy or nice it's just more of a decorative feature just to I don't know make the blaster look a little more uh, unified and there again, dragging that texture from one component to the next to kind of give it all an overall the same flavor. Uh, everything else is pretty well ready to go. I did get this guy mounted a little more solid. Um, it was a bit wiggly. Because I'd cut down this muzzle piece on the stripe, I'd cut down too much a little bit, so it was able to wiggle up and down. Also, is able to wiggle side to side a little bit just because of how the pieces fit together. And so I just took a couple pieces of uh, faux barrel and overlapped them and glued them into place there. That way, when you fit it in, it's a very, very snug fit that kind of pops in. 
and once it's assembled, there's no no wiggling, and that'll kind of uh, represent kind of a uh, what a gas vent or you know whatever. I just need something to kind of fill up that space, and it kind of works. It'll be colored either black or orange, probably to kind of make it look like a, another barrel. So body work is pretty much done at this point. Um, I've gone through and fixed a few little imperfections, a few little pinholes here and there. Uh, all I have left to do is the battery compartment door, which I was going to do a screw type, you know, like the Centaur, but because of time and because of, you know, for the sake of variety, I decided uh, I've got some magnets on order, some neodymium magnets that I'll probably, uh, I'll probably build a little lip that comes up from here that the magnets will land on either corner and will fit in, you know, here and here. And then also probably add a few more up closer to the top. And I just cut out a little kind of half moon shape, kind of a little discrete one here at the top that you can just kind of get a finger into to pop this loose. So it should be pretty uh, pretty discreet, pretty, um, you know, no, no hardware hanging out. I'll probably also add a few little, uh, just a few little tabs, probably on the corners that'll fit in. That way it locks in place and won't go side to side. That way the uh, door itself is less likely to pop out if you're running around or banging the thing around or, you know, I just wanted to make sure it's good and secure. Even though you do have a, a when his shoulder is going to be pushing in, I just want to make sure if you, you know, are dragging it up to your shoulder, it doesn't just slide off sideways and, you know, drop your door. So I'll be covering that hopefully next week when I get that in. Like I said, uh, beyond that, everything else should be ready to go. I still need to work on the wiring harness. I burned up a MOSFET and I'm not sure how that happened. But, um, yeah, as soon as those magnets come in, I can get that put on. And I believe this guy is ready for paint. So I'll be passing this off to the painter at End War, hopefully, and uh, disappear for a while. And uh, I'll have more to report later.